All right, so let me uh, see if I can quickly explain how to detect the PWM signal on a BLDC motor. Um, I doubt it that I'm going to be able to make it simple, but uh, so I'm going to be using my ESC. Um, so I have uh, my debugging board here with wires sticking out uh, for probing. And I will be using a 4600 kV motor here. And on the screen, you're seeing uh, two phases at 100% duty cycle. So you, this is phase one and then phase two. And then overlaying uh, the floating ground for reference when we cross the, the floating ground or what is called as the zero crossing when the floating phase crosses ground either going up or coming down on this end. And this is the signal that tells me when when this, when this event happens, when a zero crossing event happens, either going up or coming down. So first the easy stuff. So when it's 100% duty cycle, easy to detect because there's no breaks on the signal. It's just 100% duty cycle. So it will be a continuous signal going up and you'll have a, a continuous ground, even though it's fluctuating up and down still there's no breaks unless there's a commutation event so here's a commutation event here's another one here's another one another one so every time it commutates you can see the signal gets disrupted and when it fires you can see this stays goes up and it stays up when there's a commutation event there's an anomaly on the signal so you have to account for that uh, and then when it crosses down you know it'll stay high and it, when it crosses down it goes down and it stays down so easy to detect now, uh, there's a signal here. The motor is running at uh, uh, 19 volts, right? So it's, it's spinning pretty fast. Uh, no load, it doesn't have a propeller. So it's a small uh, 4600 kV motor. So let's look at a signal at about, you know, less than 100% and see what we get. All right, right there. So I believe that was uh, like 80% or so. So at this stage, still pretty easy to detect, right? So the easiest one to detect is always the rising edge because after the commutation event, which would be here, um, you start checking to see when it's coming up. So as soon as you get the first pulse, it goes up, you can be sure that the floating ground, which is this, it has crossed, uh, the the, flo the floating ground right so we have a zero crossing event and then you can commutate uh and then go to you know your next phase and and check whatever you need to check but on this end here this is where it becomes tricky or difficult because here's your commutation event so as soon as you commutate uh and you can see that this commutation event happened in the middle of uh, a pwm uh, period the duty cycle ends here but there's still a period here that needs to complete and it happened there so there's a, a pulse and then it goes immediately down there's ringing there as well you can see this thing going up and down right and that's is reflecting here on the signal so you will get a few false positives uh that the floating ground I, i'm sorry the floating phase has crossed uh the the floating ground or the virtual ground not the floating ground but the virtual ground so you have to account for this gap after you commutate. So in order to detect when it goes down, you, your interrupt will fire whenever this goes down. And then you just check to see the signal stays down for a period of time. Now that period of time is dynamic, right? Because it's dependent on how much voltage you're applying to your ESC board. Uh, because the higher the voltage, the faster your motor will speed will spin and then also the duty cycle because the bigger the duty cycle the faster the motor will spin as well right so you have to every time you have to keep adjusting over and over and over uh, depending on the duty cycle and the voltage available uh, for your motor so it's still pretty easy to check because there's only one and you know it's, it's one pulse one pulse and two pulses in the middle so one pulse for every commutation event, if you will, because this will be one commutation for another phase. 
uh, actually this one is for this one. You can see as it's falling down, this would be zero crossing be aligned with this. And then it commutates, right? This will be for another phase, that, uh, the one that I'm not showing here. So let's make it a little more complicated. Let me zoom in. All right, so that's about less than a quarter doing cycle. And you can see this would be difficult to detect, right? Because of this here. Zoom up a little bit. Right? Again, the rising edge, easy. Um, you still have to detect for a specified period, and that period is also dynamic, but it's shorter than the one for falling. The rising is more critical than falling. <clears throat> And it's also the easier to detect. So we know how to detect this one. This is the problem. And in this instance, it's a bigger issue now because the duty cycle is small, so the gaps are bigger and they're more frequent. right? Well, the duty cycle remains the same, but there's more pulses, more PWM periods uh, before it crosses the virtual ground. So you can see that here's the virtual ground. You can see it right in here it's also down here uh, and it's below this line here so it's still high that's why this thing is high and you can see as it starts going down right here or right up around here it crosses right here right so you get you're gonna get false positives here here a bunch here and eventually here so when you have a low PWM or a short PWM your check period for the low signal is longer, right? It also, again, is dependent on the voltage you're applying because the higher the voltage, the faster the motor is going to spin, uh, the shorter the distance between this and zero crossing. The lower the voltage, and, the, and uh, then the lower is going to spin even at 100% at duty cycle. So, uh, I think I just made it more complicated. So let me let me uh, let me go a little higher here. Uh, all right, uh, a little less, right there. All right, so. Mm, same thing here, right? So it's, it's, it's repetitive. So the signals look always the same. You have your gap here because the duty cycle ended and then there was a commutation event right after it as well. So it made it even bigger. Uh, so at this point, false positives, false positives. And then there's a, uh, uh, this is the, a, a positive event, right? So here's your interrupt. And then you check to see if the line remains low for whatever period you calculate it based on your voltage and, and duty cycle and then you commutate now you can see there's another pulse here but that's irrelevant you know because uh, you have already you can see the purple line here below this one you have already crossed uh, your virtual ground and you commutate and you don't check this again you're going into the next phase the next floating phase whichever that might be right in this instance it would be this flow this rising edge so you have a fall, uh, a falling floating phase here. So you were checking for zero crossing going down, and uh, and then your transition to check on this one as it's going up. All right. So I believe that is it. All right. So hundred percent. That's ten percent. Right. So. The faster you go, the easier it is to detect.